Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Mo from Frontineers. This video is a deep dive into the complete front box from Frontineers. We made a video um, two weeks ago and there was an overwhelming response uh, from the community. So I thank you guys very much for your support, for people who pre-ordered um, the front boxes, the battery boxes. And um, I think there's still a couple of boxes uh, left. So we will be um, updating you, um, I hope on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis on the, pro on the progress of the uh, VESC boxes and the battery boxes. So before starting the video, I would just like to update you guys who are still waiting on the Superflux. Here are some of the progress photos um, of all the of all your Superfluxes. And um, we hope to get the tire uh, next week. And by the 20th of December, we should be able to uh, pack all the motors and ship them. So again, I'll keep you updated and thank you very much for uh, patiently waiting and being with us. I also want to update you on the uh, the battery packs, the complete battery packs. We're very excited to offer complete battery packs and we've sent uh, 10 battery packs for UN38 uh, certification. Uh, and uh, once those 10 battery packs are tested in various conditions, we should be able to get the uh, shipping certification and that would mean that the battery packs are safe. So I will be showing you some pictures, some videos from the factory, how the battery packs are made. And we will also be sharing the certificate of the battery on our website. And finally, I want to uh, just break down the front box. There have been a lot of questions. So first of all, let's talk about what we see. We see a polycarbonate lid and there have been questions about the, the rigidity of the, um, the polycarbonate lid. And I can assure you this can take impacts uh, maybe even better than an aluminum lid because it flexes and comes back to its shape so yeah i absolutely love the lid and uh, once you get the lid off you are met with uh, a gasket so we've got this custom made gasket and it's ptfe it's um, just enough squish to let the lid uh, sit on the um, on the box and all the bolts to be tightened and make everything inside waterproof and dirt proof and whatever proof so it's a very very cool um, custom made ptfe gasket so once you get rid of the gasket you're met with the vesk and the box so i'll talk about the vesk the last i've got uh, the red and the black and honestly i can't uh, choose one over the other but let's uh, let's look at the black one in detail since i've got everything mounted in there so um Let's look around a little bit. So in the front, you've got um, you've got a polycarbonate custom glass to cover the LEDs, and behind that you've got a custom uh, gasket that sits between the aluminum and the glass. Going through uh, different designs and different prototypes, and this is the custom-made 3M gasket that we have, a double sticky side 3M special for gasket that bonds to glass and plastics and to uh, metal so uh, that makes uh, the whole front assembly waterproof uh, dust proof and uh, impact resistant so that means you can have a hose splash your front of your light and it will not let the water go inside and that's how we solve the problem of having the lights outside and then being such a hassle to waterproof and do all that good stuff. So now let's go to the LEDs. Your LEDs just sit inside all waterproof. We have nothing to worry about. There's this little bolt in the center and a little bit of a holder that holds it in place. And then you see that there's a, a very, very unique shape of uh, the LED. And the reason we did that is, let's see, at, let's look at one of these prototype LEDs. First of all, it's aluminum backed, so that means all the heat can be transferred back to this handle. And the bolt makes sure that this is very tightly held on to the handle. So uh, the odd shape is that, so we've got four wires running back, so we've got them, we've got this recess here so that the wires don't get damaged by the lid. And these edges is where the lid sits and presses it down on the box so the LED doesn't move around and then inside the box you can see that Leah has very very meticulously designed where this LED sits so that it doesn't move uh, front and back so you can see there's little channels here so the LED sits 
in those channels and then it's pushed away from this channel and it's pushed forward from this um, little handle and that way you make sure the LED doesn't move front and back and then that bolt here just kind of is the last nail in the coffin to make sure you've got absolutely um, you've got your LEDs in place and as you can see we've got 20 LEDs we've wasted no space and that ensures you have a complete clear view so that's all the uh, work we spent on designing the LEDs and we finally got to this amazing um, LEDs let me actually just quickly turn it on so you can see we've got a little fun a little bit of an RGB stuff going on here and I've got foot pads in the background right so if I press the foot pads then uh, it becomes brighter obviously and then uh, of course you can change these LEDs to be white or red whatever you like so as um, as I put my hand and remove it uh, the LEDs respond to it you can see these they're really bright and really close together and that just gives it that look of um, being one seamless line of light so back to the box so looking away from the LEDs if you go on the left side you've got these two pillars and these are these are more like GT style of mounting rather than XR style of mounting and um, we just made that uh, just to make it stronger and kind of just took the best of both worlds now don't take me wrong this doesn't mean it fits on a GT frame it still fits on the XR slash the fun wheel frame so you can take any XR uh, compatible rails and it'll fit on that or you can take the fun wheel rails They're all built for the XR platform but we've got two threaded ports instead of, of add-on ports we've got two threaded ports here which uh, obviously take a lot of machining and talk, uh, take a lot of craftsmanship but we made them such that uh, the port sits in there very nicely and snugly and there's a rubber gasket around the switch port and obviously this is a momentary switch so that means you will not be dealing with uh, dead batteries and you won't be dealing with um, switches pressed uh, by mistake and on the other side we've got our um, GX16 aviation uh, two pin charger which uh, will uh, be compatible with the Fungineer's charger and uh, it, we also have a threaded ring that just makes it sit inside with a gasket and then that makes it entirely waterproof. On the bottom here you've got Leah's signature and the Fungineer's logo and you've got a full size handle. Now on the back side this is my favorite part actually um, what Leah designed was these uh, cooling fins that kind of draw, uh, create a low pressure and draw the air in. Because think about it, when your box is closed and you've got your bank bumpers under it and you've got your foot pad over it, that means there is no way air can cool this box except from this side. So your bank bumpers will end somewhere here and then your tire will be here. And then that means there's this little space that is still exposed. So once you move forward, these little cooling fins in this little space is going to draw air up and kind of cool the box in the process. So I think that was absolutely genius and they look really cool. Coming to the ports, uh, you already know there's going to be a, an M20 gland here that can screw in. And then, and then we've got uh, this connector that is also compatible with these XR style switchcraft pads and this is an XR connector so what we've done is we've made it compatible so that what you can do is you can take our connector out if ours is a seven pin connector and you need a five pin one so you can take this out and you can screw this in and any XR foot pad uh, style would work and then this one is of course the Superflux connector most of you asked what if we have an older Superflux a V1 without a connector will a cable gland still fit so I've got this M20 or PG 13.5 cable gland you can see it fits really nicely and you can have a nut here and maybe even put a little bit of silicone to waterproof it but it, uh, it fits really really nice and snugly oh one thing people asked is how is a 21700 battery gonna fit in the box so we've been talking to Mario to make sure the 21700 split packs that he makes fit in our box along with our vest and a lot of the VESC design was reiterated, a lot of the box design was reiterated just to make sure that four cells of 21700 fit. And you can see there's uh, brackets, there's two br going to be two brackets on both sides, which uh, 
which can be mounted and they're gonna hold the battery in place. And that I think pretty much sums up everything the box has to offer. And um, last question <clears throat> that I would like to answer is that a lot of you are asking if we can get only the box without the vest and we can mount our own vest. We are definitely not against that and we encourage that. We will be doing that in the future. It's just that right now um, we have limited capacity. So we're just gonna do CNC boxes once we get the funds um, going and that will allow us to um, invest in a mold for a non-CNC boxes, which is gonna be the more cost-effective boxes for everybody out there. So coming back to the crown jewel of the box is the Thor 300. So that's what we're calling our VESC, it's the Thor 300. Uh, and I'm gonna uh, disassemble it, open it all up just to see how we're gonna mount it in the box. And you've got the status LED, your front LED, your back LED from the battery, you can just plug it in. Go to your lights tab in the new float app and then that's it you can change the colors you can get some rgb things going actually you know what since you are here i'm gonna show you the latest updates that have been made courtesy of mitch so uh mitch thank you very much uh, what an absolute legend and uh, of course kyle who started this um his package also works great um out of the box but Mitch just made some, uh, introduced some new things and he just optimized uh, the app. So I guess it's now up to Dado uh, and Nico to um, get the lights in the float app as soon as possible. So uh, you know who you guys need to uh, push <laughs> to get the updates done. So I just connected my status uh, LED here and I'm gonna show you the front LED as well, which is this one. I'm going to raise the box a little bit so you can see the status LED and the front LED. And once I turn on the vest from the side, you're going to hear a couple of beeps. And uh, the number of beeps correspond to the number, the error that you have. And um, I forgot what number of beeps we have, but I'm pretty sure it's saying that it's a low voltage uh, error because I'm powering this off of my power supply unit. But you can see some RGB stuff going on in the front. And there's other modes like this uh, strobe mode. And again, everything is just less bright when you are not riding. So if I press my foot pad, it's just going to be obscenely bright and <laughs> almost blinding. And obviously is the normal white and red thing. So right now the IMU is level. So if I do a little bit of tilt, it'll change to red. But I start going back. I start going forward it'll change back to white and then the status LED will just show you the battery percentage and the duty cycle all that good stuff and this is what Mitch calls the rave mode and again all these options are available just by the click of a button in the float app and so if you press uh, if you're writing it just becomes brighter And yeah, that's just uh, what it is. So just a quick uh, preview of what Mitch has worked on. And it's been absolutely legendary of Mitch um, to make all these changes for the community. I know there's other VESCs out there who are also going to benefit from the Float app, not just us. And the LEDs are basically coming to other VESCs as well. Let's just uh, open everything up and show you what we got. So I'll disconnect my foot pad. So what you see here is our VESC is bolted down by a lot of bolts. So the top uh, uh, the top PCB is obviously the uh, logic PCB and it's held down by three bolts. And it's held down by three bolts and six standoffs. So before I remove the logic PCB, I'm gonna carefully remove these locking connectors. So these locking connectors, uh, connectors are really tiny. You have to press the lock and then remove them like so. So that was a foot pad connector. This is the uh, switch or the button connector. So I'm just gonna press it and push it out. So this is the best way to remove it using a tweezer. You can also use your fingers like I just showed you. I'm gonna remove the front light, the status LED And that's it, everything is disconnected. Now, I would hope you never have to remove your logic PCB on your VESC, 
because it should work right out of the box but if you do just make sure you don't damage the pins and be really careful and move it straight up because you can see there's one two three four five six pins holding it in place and then uh, this is what the back looks like so aluminum on aluminum uh, you've got your vesk on and on a giant heat sink so you've got a small vesk on a giant heat sink and that'll ensure that um, your vest can run an unprecedented amount of current through the phase wires because the bottleneck becomes the transfer of heat to your um, heat sink. So no, ma no matter how big your heat sink is, if your PCB has uh, hindrances in between, if it's not in a metal PCB, it's gonna have some losses and it's gonna take time to transfer to the thermal, pa to the thermal pads and then down to the surface or the heat sink. So we've, elimin we've eliminated the, the thermal pads. So your FET is now, it, it is as if your FET is now directly connected to uh, the heat sink. And the heat sink is not just any heat sink, but the biggest heat sink there can be. Your whole box is your heat sink. But what that meant for us is that we had to make three PCBs instead of one PCB. So we've got one metal PCB. Of course, it's more expensive because it's metal. Then we've got a capacitor PCB because you can't solder uh, both the, capa the capacitors on the power PCB. So we've got this on a separate PCB if you see the green color. And then we've got a separate a separate double-sided PCB, which is the logic PCB. So instead of uh, paying for one p cost for one PCB, we're paying for cost for three PCBs. So our costs are significantly higher. And then uh, how is the power PCB mounted to the uh, the heat sink or the box is what matters, right? So we've got one, two, three standoffs that also hold the PCB to the metal. And we've got a bolt here. And then we've got two bolts, one on this side, one on this side. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six bolts on a very, very small surface area to ensure that your PCB is sitting absolutely flush with the surface and there is optimal heat transfer between the vesk and the box that ensures your temperature stays stay low your and you can squeeze the most power out of your vesk and your thermals don't become a bottleneck just an update on production so the first batch is as you know sold out on the web store and it is already um in production and i should have the unit uh finished and units finished and delivered to me next week and i should make uh, an update video about them before shipping them out now this is if you guys did, did not want to buy the whole box or don't want to buy the box and just bought the vesk, you will have the new lids, um, which will have the mounting option for Thor. Um, and then um, once your vesks are shipping, these lids should be ready to ship to. And uh, you can add these to your order and they can ship together. And then, of course, they will mount on the normal 3D printed um, Fungineers box that you can buy from us or print yourself. And just a reminder, all our 3D printable files are free of cost, thanks to Remy, who has designed and worked on that for the last five years. Uh, you can find it on Discord and a lot of other cool people and cool things are being discussed. So make sure uh, you are on our Discord, not missing out. All right, this video is plenty long. I hope you enjoyed it. There's more updates coming. Thank you for your orders. Thank you for your support. Otherwise, as well, uh, I'm going to keep you updated on the Super Fox shipping, on the Thor shipping, and on the box development. Stay tuned. Uh, keep fun engineering. Stay safe. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.